And Sanjay Dutt, QT Marshall, Pat Buck, Tony Schiavone, all receiving AW promotions today. And uh, Madison Rain hired as well to uh, work as a coach, although they also announced she's going to be wrestling. Yeah, she's going to debut on Friday night, right? Yeah. Or next week. Yep. I think Friday night. Um, well, we'll see how it works out. Um, you know, um, I mean, the, the as far as like the new roles and everything, I guess Tony Schiavone in, in talent relations, and um, I guess Pat Buck's going to also be working with Christopher Daniels in that category as well. Um, you know, I guess there's been some complaints about lack of communication. So in theory, this should help that out. You know, uh, Pat Buck and QT and, and Sanjay Dutt have been the guys that Tony Khan's been doing a lot of his discussing of creative with, you know what I mean? And so, I mean, they've, that's already been, they've, they've been kind of like the, the guys that he's been, uh, you know, when he pitches ideas and everything like that for some time now, those are the guys he's been pitching to. So, so they, um, they listen and I guess that they give critiques and everything. So they're, they're involved in the process. You know, Sanjay's been, you know, studying the game for, I don't know, 30 years and, uh, you know, QT has been around for a long time as a trainer and Pat Buck's been around. He's, you know, did his own promotion, did his own wrestling school, worked in WWE. So they, they're, they're guys, you know, Sanjay was in WWE. Sanjay did a lot of roles in, in, uh, impact. So actually that's like, a, you know, that's a good person to have around because when he was in impact, he was doing, he was booking, he was doing talent and, and doing talent relations. So, so he's a lot of experience when it comes to that. So, you know, it's, it's a uh, different things. The, uh, really the biggest stuff is this, uh, the, uh, WBD news, which has been, if you're an AEW fan, um, the last two days, uh, not good news at all. I mean, they are, I mean, we knew that they were going to do slashing of the budgets, but it really feels like, uh, TNT is, you know, the, whatever it is that the prestige programming that TNT had, that that's going to be out the window and they're, they're, I just have this feeling aside from the NBA that TNT is just going to be another station, um, you know, on cable as opposed to a, and TBS, which were like kind of cable powerhouses. And, and it looks like they just want to slash things to the, you know, and CNN too, for that matter, they're slashing everything. HBO max, um, is I guess they're going to merge it, but a lot of the empl a lot of the executives at HBO Max are going to be gone. A lot of the budget for makes HBO Max is probably going to be down. It does not, you know, they're really trying to to cut a lot, a lot of money, and they know that the one thing that they feel that they have to keep, which is going to cost them a lot of money, is the NBA. So it's going to be very interesting to see. It's it's probably the worst time possible to go in there and ask for a big raise in rates now, um, you know. So, you know that it, it it's it's uh, it's going to be very interesting. I don't see, I don't see AEW being canceled. It's, um, you know, most weeks it is the most popular show, you know, unless it's unless it's during NBA season. It's the most popular show in either. TNT or TBS, so you really aren't going to, you know, you're not going to cut your highest rated show. I mean, it's possible. I've seen it happen, but it's probably not going to happen. But as far as giving it like a big increase in um, rights, um, you know, they're really going to have to find outside bidders. And then that becomes problematic because if you go to a weaker station, um, you know, your numbers aren't going to look as good. I mean, one of the great things about being on TBS, um, you know, is especially coming off of Big Bang Theory, you got a good lead in, you got a station that, that people actually watch, you know, um, it's not like one of these stations that nobody, you know, not that has a very, very low viewership. I mean, with the exception of, uh, you know, I mean, like, really, where they are positioned is probably about as good a positioning as you could get for the show. The only thing that would be better where they would do better would be if they were on ESPN, and that wouldn't be better because ESPN, number one, ESPN hasn't done pro wrestling in a long, long time, and they probably don't have an interest in doing it. But even if they did, I mean, I guess they did some, show some WWE stuff during the pandemic, but really, 
that was just a short-term thing they they didn't follow up on that but obviously um you'd be preempted constantly so it would not it's just not a good fit i mean this is the this station is the perfect fit for aw but at the same time um you know you want to have you know the key way the company is going to be able to make money is through television rights and if you want to make it a profitable company and your uh, parent company is slicing budgets everywhere and in ways that people you know do not expect it such as just stopping movies in production stopping tv shows in production i mean it's been a bloodletting there and there's probably still more to come so the timing of uh the timing for AEW, you know with their uh their deal coming up which would be at the end of next year um the last two days haven't looked good if you've been following the story at all hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.